Hello, this is Brian Cassis for Lattice Semiconductor. In this video, I'm going to show you some more details about using the new timing analysis view in the new Lattice Diamond software. So first, I'll change over to my file list. In my analysis file area, you can see uh, two TPF files here, MixCounter and MixCounter2. TPF files are the project files used by the new timing analysis view. So it's important to understand um, that these files are here, also how to effectively use them. If I go on any of these files, I can either set them active if they're not active, or I can go to one that's already active and I can set that as inactive. So when I have either no TPF files or all of them are set as inactive, when I go and launch my timing analysis view, it will actually read its time preferences directly from the LPF file. So I'll show you an example here. So now the timing analysis view is launched and it's rerunning the timing calculation here. So now it's uh, launched and run the timing calculation and you can see that we uh, did meet our desired timing here. If I go and click on the preferences icon here, which opens a TPF specific version of the um, timing preferences normally contained in the LPF file, you can see my frequency is set to 100 megahertz there. So I'm going to close down these views now. This time I'm going to go over here and set this file as the active TPF file. Now by doing this, this will cause timing analyzer even if I click on the icon to open using this preference file rather than rereading the information from the LPF file. So if I click on the icon now, we'll launch open and we run the timing analysis and here you can see that the timing analysis failed because if I go to the preferences for the TPF file, you can see that it's now 1,000 megahertz. 1000 megahertz or gigahertz as opposed to 100. So it shows that it read it from this TPF file rather than from the LPF file. So that's how you control the operation of the timing analyzer view. The last thing I'll do here, close this one more time, is even if uh, I have any of these active or, or none of them active, I can go to a specific TPF file here just double click on that TPF file and that will open Timing Analyzer with that specific TPF file and not reread from the LPF file. So now we have Timing Analyzer open and the timing did pass because it's reading the file from the mix counter, not the mix counter 2. So this is how you control opening the uh, timing analysis view um, either from LPF from an active TPF or from any TPF file. Let's say you had opened from a TPF file and you wanted to um, bring the existing LPF information into here. The way to uh, read the LPF file into an existing TPF file is click on the preference icon here which opens the spreadsheet view for the TPF and then you can go to the file menu and you now have an item that says import copy LPF to TPF. So this is a way to update your TPF file from any changes that you may have done in the uh, LPF file. On the other side, if you want to make some timing changes, so let's say you change the frequency uh, in the TPF file, you've run your timing analysis and you decide you now want to use this information for the LPF file to implement your design, the way to do that is to go and click on the specific preference that you want to export back to the LPF file. So in this case, I'll click on the frequency for the clock net. Uh, keep in mind, you can also do this with any other preferences that you set. In this particular case, I've just got the um, clock preference here. I can then right click, and now you see I have an export to LPF file. So this will always export back to your active LPF file. So you do want to be careful that you don't um, use this uh, accidentally and overwrite information you did not want to be changed in your active LPF file. 
But this is how you do it. You right click on one or more specific preferences that you want to export to and you export directly to there. Note that you do have to click right on the preference. If you click above, say just on frequency, you won't have that menu item. So you need to click very specifically on the preference that you want to export to the LPF file. So that's how to control um, bringing information in and out of the timing analysis view. Let's look at the timing analysis view itself specifically. In the timing analysis view, you have settings, and these settings are read from the trace settings inside your uh, active strategy, um, and those are reported here. Then I have any preferences, timing preferences that, are, that I've uh, put into my uh, preference file, either LPF or TPF, and those are reported down here, so I've got my setup on this particular clock and hold on this particular clock. So any preferences that I set will be reported in the analysis results, and then I can just click on them to see their information here. Over here I have um, the actual set of preferences for this clock listed here. You can see the source, destination, slack score, arrival, uh, data delay, percentage on route, clock skew, you can also assign colors if you want, um, and you can see the direction of it. So a lot of information you can gather from this report here. And you can also filter either on the source or on the destination if you want to look for a very specific uh, point in your timing path. Down below, I have a detail path table that's shown here. I can also look at clock paths. Um, I've got a schematic view, so I can go down and see a schematic representation of this timing path. And I can also look at the actual trace report, uh, just like you can look at in the um, report view also. So that's the user interface. I could do things such as uh, export the timing um, pass to uh, a CVS file. I can take and change the settings here uh, for the specific timing analysis run. If you want to change the settings permanently, you need to change those back in the uh, trace setting of your strategy. As we've used already, this preference icon actually brings up a spreadsheet view specific for the TPF file. And then I can uh, control my UI here. So um, that's how I can do this. Of course, one of the great advantages of the new timing analysis view is that I can dynamically uh, change my paths on the fly without having to rerun, remap my design, which I have to do in ISP Lever. So for example, let's open our uh, spreadsheet view up again. And we've got our frequency here. Let's change this to something like 300 megahertz. So this is now uh, in memory. You can see I have an asterisk telling me I have a change in memory. It has not been saved out yet. I can then go back to my timing analysis view, and you notice now that this icon here is rotating. This tells me that I've got a changed timing preference that I can reread into the timing analysis view. Once I click on this, this will read this information back into the timing analysis view and re-execute the timing uh, analysis, both for setup and hold on any references here. So let's click on this. And now we've uh, run the timing analysis again. You can now see that this uh, setup path is in red, which means it failed timing. And you can see we have a negative Slack score that reports that. So this is a brief overview on how to use the new timing analysis view in the uh, Diamond software. You use your greatly increased capabilities. You can take and control your the startup behavior of timing analysis view, depending upon whether you uh, have any active TPF files whether you double click on a TPF file or have no active ones and just launch the timing analysis view and it reads it from the LPF file. And then once you're in the timing analysis view, you can use the timing analysis view along with the spreadsheet preferences for timing analysis to take and do uh, iterative timing analysis on the fly without having to re-implement your design to uh, speed up your ability to get uh, timing closure on your design. So I hope this has been of use. Uh, for information on the new Diamond software for other areas, please see the other videos that are available.